Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make that little fishy you saw in the photo. And I'm going to use my 22 pin for this. So I'm not using any waste yarn, but you will have to count your rows because most 22 pins don't have a counter. Um, I'm going to use kind of a darker color than what you saw in the picture. So you don't need a tail or anything because we're just cinching one one end of it. Actually we're kind of cinching both ends of it but anyway. So load your machine if you don't know how then wrap your yarn around this black needle and it goes down so you were in front the next one you go behind the next one you go in front behind in front behind in front. This is how you load your machine this is just a simple cast on so when you come back around before you get to the black hook well, I'm not sure why that fell out um, you should be behind this glass needle before the black needle you should be behind it that way you know you've done everything right so I'm gonna put it in medium tension if I if I struggle I'll just change it to loose tension. Um, these little machines bind quite a bit so um, now we are going to do 60 rows. The first row technically doesn't count because it only puts it on every other stitch. Now I start to count because it's going to hit every single stitch. So this is my 60 rows. I am going to use a long enough tail to pick everything off. So as long as it goes around your machine, it's long enough. I always have them too long, which is fine because so this one, this machine, I have to get up for because it's got these two stupid things and it gets in my way. So I'm going to turn the machine, and hopefully you can see this. I'm going to turn the machine, exposing a few. But when I first start, I'm only going to pick off one at a time. So you just go up and underneath your piece of yarn. I'm going to pull this way so that I don't pull the next one off. And I'm going to do that all the way around. I only got 22 stitches, so ultimately you can do more than one. You just need to make some room so you can stretch it to do more than one. So right now it's pretty tight on your machine. Okie dokie. So, let me zoom out. So, you've got your little tube. That's the inside. I get my, my needle off of this right now. So, I'll just turn it right side in. Or right side out. And we want to stretch it. And I had a bit of an issue here. You saw when I was doing it, because it happened on camera, my thing popped out of its tension. and So my stitches are a little loose there, but we will try to get around that. So you just want to cinch both, both ends. I double cinch all mine, so but you don't have to. So I just start with making a knot after I cinch it to secure that cinch. 
and then this hole here I just work in and out weaving around the hole and that's my double cinch and then here these loops that I dropped can be incorporated into my double cinch that way I don't have a hole not sure how I dropped those stitches I'm not sure I'm not sure how they fell off I shouldn't say I dropped them I don't know how they fell off but easy peasy fix I've had this machine this new one for a few weeks my old one I'm sure you know what my old one looked like I'm gonna turn the light up a little bit um the old one was pretty crappy bound a lot it was binding a lot um so well, I seem to have caught the edge of that that's okay um this end we are cinching as well I'm gonna stick that in there since I just did whatever I just did there I don't know what I did So I'm going to double cinch this, like I said, you don't have to, it's just something I always do um, for two reasons. It's a better cinch, it's a better hold, and it's a better look aesthetically, it just looks better. So, those are the reasons. And I pull back and forth like that because it really tightens that knot down. So. I got to put this side inside this side like you're making a hat so if you're familiar with making a hat you're gonna know what I mean I've done a few hats so um, I like to stick this down in here because I'm gonna stick it out there and tie a knot so I just stick this inside here working my way up to the top oh. I got my needles stuck on everything yeah I've got my needles stuck on everything much faster to just do it like this and there's the spot that I screwed up well I my machine screwed up so I'm going to stick the needle So it's going to go through the top and through the top. That way I know it's even. I know it's um, going to be sitting in there properly. So once you have that done, you can just tie these in a tight double knot. Just like you would a hat. Here we go. So, one of them we need. You can stuff the top of this, because that's going to be the head of the fish. So, however big you want. It doesn't matter how much. I mean, it does. It's up to you how much fin you want. I think that's fine for me. This was my last one. So. Um, yeah, a little. the fin's a little longer, but it is different yarn, too. So, I don't know. I still did 60 rows. But I don't think his head's about the same size but they don't have to all be the same. So figure out which one you want to use, doesn't matter, but pick one of these and you're going to go back in, just kind of in a different spot. Don't go back in the same spot. But don't go too far away from it because you want it just to look like a stitch. And you're going to come out around the area where your head ends and then you're going to cinch around here actually you're going to double cinch so you're just going to kind of 
go through the double layers and weave back and forth like this. So pull that tight. My head's a little smaller on this guy. So if he closes in here, you don't really have to do another cinch. This yarn is very different than my other yarn. I had to do a double cinch. Um, but I think I'm going to do a double cinch anyway. But before you do your double cinch, make a knot to secure this cinch. And then you can start your next cinch. It's just added security. And again, aesthetically, it looks good. Looks better than not having it. Just make sure you're going in and out enough times. Make a knot, again, to secure your cinch. You have to move your stuffing back around because you probably squished it all down. And that is the start of your little fishy. So, this guy here, he can just go in and you can weave a little bit with him. Actually, you don't have to. I don't I don't think the cinch is going to pop open. You can wave if you want. So, I'm just moving my um stuffing around. That's all I'm doing. Uh, so this guy can just get tucked in between the layers. He, um, we don't need him for anything. So just go down as close as you can to the tail to this part. Just so it looks like a stitch once again. If I can get in there. There we go. Oh, no. So you can weave or you can go between the layers. Either way. We get rid of him. So, you need to just decide which way the face is going to go. And I think I'm probably just going to stay down here. So, for my other one, I did a scale on top. So, you don't have to do that scale. But, I'm going to do it. If you want to do it, you're more than welcome to. Actually, I'm just going to use the straggler I just cut off. So I just cut my straggler off. I'm just going to use that to do it. So tie a knot on one end, or a double if you want. I'm just going to tie one. So if you've decided the direction of your face, because you're going to always have this indent, and I, I use that to make a mouth for like a puffer fish because that that was what I was going for here is puffer fish they don't all have spikes all over them by the way uh, so I use this little dip down part to put the mouth in just to make it look better so scales on top to go down to his head doesn't matter where you go in it just matters where you come out so just make sure you're coming out where you want your scale to be. So I'm going to pop out, this is how I want my head, my mouth here, so I'm going to pop out here. Go right in beside this guy, but come out on an angle. Let's do it this way, that way it's underneath and not on top. So go in and come out across from him. This is just to get started, like I said. Now, go in next door to your lead, the next stitch, and come out 
where you just went in. And then when you pull, you're going to pinch at the same time. It's not that noticeable now, but it will be. Now you're going now this is how we do it. That was just to get started. This is how we do it. So, um this doesn't get pulled in. This will get poked in. So it'll get caught up in the stuffing. It just shouldn't come out. So go in next door to your lead. Go into the next stitch. Come across and make sure you're coming across the same width. Oh, I keep grabbing that tail. Pull and pinch. And do it again. Come next door. Come across. You can go down into both of your layers if you want. It'll give you a better lift. Pull and pinch. So we do that all the way across. So you can go as far down as you want. I think I'm just going to go here. It's fine because i got to put the eyeballs on. So if I'm going to stop, I pull. Sorry, I wasn't even on camera. I pull and I leave a loopy. And then I go back up here. I go through and I go through the loop. So when I pull, that's going to make a knot. And it's also going to provide me the lift I need for my scale up there. So now this guy can just get weaved in and pop out wherever. When you're done with that, this guy can get cut off a little bit, but leave a nubby. And then you can poke that right down. So next we'll do the fins. All right. I had to get my book out where I wrote everything down so I can remember what I was doing or what I had done. So we'll do the face after. we got to put fins on either side of where we just did our little bumpy things. So just make a slip knot any way you make one. And we're going to, oh, I guess... I guess if I'm doing a knitting machine, not all of you know how to crochet. So I just take the piece of yarn, this is the end end, and I wrap it around my finger making an X. And then I take this one and I, I leapfrog it over this one and then I grab it, that from underneath and I pull. And then I pull on this to tighten it. So I'm using a four millimeter for this. Just because I wanted it kind of tight. So you have to make sure you count how many rows down you started doing this so that your fins are even. Um, I did four rows down but if you want it down lower you can do more. Uh, I think I'll do five. So just count your columns. So one, two, three, four, and five is down here. So I'm just going to go in like that. I'm going to make eight single crochets. So I'm going to grab my yarn and I'm going to pull it through, flip it over. You'll have two loops on at this point. You're going to grab your yarn and pull it through. So that's just to attach. You're going to go back down the same hole and do the same thing, but this time it's going to make a stitch. So. The first one was just attaching and this one was making a stitch. So now go into your second one. Make sure you're staying in the same column. And you're going to do number two. Go into the next one. You're going to do number three. Go into the next one. Four. Five. Six, seven, and eight. So that's eight single crochets. Let's see if I can show you here. That's what I was going into. So 
with it all stretched out like this. I know it's hard to tell, but that's what you're going into. Or, you know what, wherever you can stick it. Here's a better idea, because this is all stretched out. Here's a better visual. These are your little V shapes. And that's what you're going into. To do your stitch. But up here, so I did five rows down. So now you're going to chain one, so just yarn over and go through that. And you're going to turn. So, the first stitch, so when you pull back, you're going to see a stitch right there. The first stitch you're going to go into, you're going to grab some yarn, but then you're, you're just going to pull it through the loop you already have. That's called a slip stitch. The next two stitches are going to get what we've already done, two single crochets. We're going to get fancier and fancier. The next stitch is going to get two half double crochets in the same space. So you're going to yarn over, you're going to go into the stitch, you're going to pull up a loop, so now you have three on, you're going to yarn over and go through all three, and you're going to do it again in the same space, your half double. Your next stitch is going to get two double crochets, so you're going to yarn over once, you're going to go into the stitch, you're going to pull up a loop, you got three on, this time you're going to pull through two, yarn over again and pull through two. So do that again in the same stitch, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Your next one is going to get two half triples in the same space. So you're going to yarn over twice, you're going to go into the stitch, you're going to pull up a loop, so you should have four loops on, you're going to yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through all three, and so do it again in the same space, you're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, that's a half triple. Your next stitch is going to get two triples, so you're going to yarn over two times, you're going to go in, you should have four loops on, you're going to pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So the reason it's called a triple crochet is because you, you pull through three times. So let's do that again, yarn over twice, Go into the same stitch, you're going to pull through two, you're going to yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two. This very last one, so it looks like you might have two, but this is where we join and you have one last stitch right there. This one's going to get a double triple, so you're going to yarn over three times. You're going to go into the stitch, we're only doing this once, you're going to pull up a loop, you should have five loops on, you're going to yarn over, you're going to pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. That's four times. And here, you're going to chain one, and you're going to fasten off right here. So make your knot, pull that down. And then you're just going to tuck this guy away. Back down the tippy top of his fin. Very, very, very politely. So try not to pull too hard, but doing it at the top also gives it the stabi stability a little bit more to stand up. So that's why I chose to do that. And then this fool, he can just get tucked down inside the fish. So go in as close as you can to him. 
and then just pop out somewhere. There. That's one fin down. So now we have to make sure that we match the other side. So first let's make our slip knot. Leapfrog. Grab this guy. So I went down five rows from my scale. One, two, three, four, five. So I want to hold him the exact same way that I just held this guy. Oh, I gotta count again. One, two, three, four, five. So when you go in, just have to kind of eyeball it to make sure <laughs> you've counted properly because God knows mistakes can happen. So attach, pull that tail tight. You're gonna go into the same stitch. Let's try that again. Go into the same stitch, make a single crochet. Oh, good lord. I might have pulled too tight. So that's one single crochet, so just go into the next stitch. Make number two. Three. Nope, that was in the same stitch. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So just make sure you're, you've counted properly and these are even. So chain one, turn. The very first stitch, so you gotta pull this back and you're gonna just do a slip stitch. That you should be used to for closing your scarves and stuff like that. The next two get a single crochet. Again, a stitch you should know doing this kind of work. One in each. And now we start doubling up the stitches. So the next one's gonna get two half doubles, so you're gonna yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three. Do it again. The next one's going to get two doubles. You're going to yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. That's why it's called a double, because you pull through twice. Yarn over. Unless you're British, and that's called a single. And a triple is called a treble. And I don't know what a double triple is. And do it again, double. So we're going to do two half triples in the next one. So you're going to yarn over twice, go into the stitch, you're going to pull through two, then you're going to pull through three. And you're going to do it again. Yarn over twice, go into the stitch, pull through two, pull through three. Two triples, yarn over twice, go into the stitch, Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, do it again. Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. The last one, the big double triple. Yarn over three times, go in to your stitch, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. So that's four times you pull through. Then you can fasten off. And tuck everything away. So, so far this is your fish. I think mine's completely even, or I just gotta move my stuffing around. Tends to get out of shape. You 
can stretch this out probably too if you don't feel like I just don't feel like it's open enough so I just want to stretch it out there we go that looks better so um, let's do the mouth first if you're gonna do the mouth that I did you don't have to do a mouth I just thought uh, you know puffer fish <laughs> anyway tie knot at the end at one end thread the other end you're gonna have to block these because it will roll up a bit unless you don't mind the rolling so it doesn't matter where you come go in it just matters where you come out so I'm gonna come out in this groove this divot area so you can put any mouth on it you want I'm just gonna repeat what I did on my other one so I'm just gonna come across and get through there come back out And I'm just going to do that multiple times. So I want to squeeze this a little bit. And that kind of indents right there and looks like he has cheekies. So I'm just going to do this a couple of times. I went a little overboard on my last mouth, I think, but I did it too, one too many times. But And again, just pinch so it looks like he has cheekies. So I think that's probably good enough for me. I'm just going to do three times. It's fine. It's just a fish. I don't have big mouths. So I'm just going to pop out somewhere. Too much yarn as usual. Uh, when you cut it, push right down so when it pops back up, it kind of sucks the rest of it inside. Um... I'm going to save this black for something else. So, um, I want to do the same thing that I did. A, I'm going to cut off, leaving a nubby, and then I'm just going to push that down into the stuffing. That way, if somebody tries to rip my mouth off, I'm not going to be able to do it. So, the last thing, obviously, is gluing on the eyes because um, you don't want... You don't want to move it after. So I glued mine on just on either side. I think they're too close though. Anyway, pick your eyes. I'm going to go with um, these colored ones because I think they're funny. They're staticky too. So um, I did blue on my other one, but for this guy, I'll do. Whatever color that is. Actually, that I just got two different colors in there. Let me see. Those are two of the same. So I'm going to go pretty wide, I think, with this one. Oh, I think my top's closed. I'm going to go just above his fin here. I'm using this. It's clear, washable, Amazon Basics school glue. So I'm going to put him in the same spot. So if it squeezes out, it doesn't really matter. Because you will not see it. So, we just need to let that sit and dry. So, let me show you. Um, the glue all squeezed out. Now I can feel the glue, but you can't see the glue, and it's squeezed out. But if you wash that with water, it'll take the hardness out, because you can hear how hard that that is with the glue there. I put the eye over here, and then I decided to move it. But if I wash that with water, it'll soften right up. But I'm not going to do that, because no one's going to be touching it there. So that is it for the fish. 
Now I got my two little guys, my two little fishies. <laughs> I like him better, actually. His eyes are closer, so he doesn't look so, so silly. Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. And I'll see you in the next video.